everyone, my name's Tammy Logan and I've been writing the Zero Waste blog Gippsland Unwrapped for about five years now and it's where I share my experiences of trying to reduce waste as much as possible in a rural setting. I chose the name Gippsland Unwrapped because local living and community are very important for environmental, social and health reasons. Gippsland is my place, I'm connected to the people and environment here and so my blog name represents the importance of living local to live sustainably. And the unwrapped part refers to avoiding packaging, but also revealing sustainable solutions. However, these recent circumstances have really prompted me to reflect on and actually marvel at how staying at home has opened my eyes even further to what is around me and how I can make use of resources I already had. By doing that, I reduce the impacts of my consumption and how much waste I produce. In addition, many people have been asking recently, is coronavirus the end of the zero waste movement? And without hesitation, I say, no, it's not. In fact, I feel that the zero waste movement can thrive under challenging conditions like this because I believe the zero waste movement makes us more resilient and self-reliant and therefore highly adaptable to change. Zero waste has always meant more than reusable cups, bags, straws and containers. It's about how we can best maximise resources and minimise waste. And there are endless ways to do this when we use our imagination and pay attention to our surroundings. So I hope my story today is proof of this. So initially the stay-at-home restrictions and cancellations of our activities over the past few months created the time and space needed to accomplish things on the to-do list. I was finally able to repair this blanket and this board game that had actually been putting off for more than a decade, which is crazy. They obviously mean something to me um, and that's why I held on to them for so long. I was also able to expand my knowledge and experience in new projects like homebrew cider making. Um, I've been really enjoying that. So I think many people can relate to my experience of having more time to focus on passion projects or repair projects and just trying something new. But as the weeks went on, I was crossing things off my to-do list and I began to notice how the extra time and mental space was really allowing me to get to know my place in more depth. Getting to know my place was not on the to-do list at all. It was just a consequence of slowing down and having the mental capacity to pay attention to my surroundings. So even though I consider myself a resourceful person, I've been really surprised by how much I've been able to accomplish at home without ever leaving. So I think my experience really validates the benefits of slow living and frugal living movements as well as home-based lifestyles. Now before I share some of the ways that getting to know my place has allowed me to reduce waste, I should give you I live in rural Gippsland, Victoria. We moved to our current residence 18 months ago, which is a rental property with a house on one and a quarter acres with established gardens and the remnants of an old orchard, mostly apple trees, so that's why the siding cider making adventure. The house is 50 years old, and prior to that, there was another house that had existed on the land um, and had been knocked down. Our landlord actually owns and runs the farm that surrounds us and I'd like to acknowledge that the traditional owners of the land are the Bunurong people. So what did I discover? It all really started with deciding to make more vegetable garden beds. When we moved here, I'd only set up a small one quite quickly after we first moved in. I was actually grieving the loss of my last garden at the last place that we lived in. But under these circumstances, I was really motivated to start producing more food again. This motivation just cascaded into working in and learning more about the existing ornamental gardens and the orchard around here. And so I just began discovering things on the property. I discovered lots of useful plants that I hadn't even noticed prior to our lockdown. These plants included this pot full of aloe vera, which was hidden behind bushes. So I took that out and divided them up so um, all the plants can thrive there and I can use those. Another plant um, that I found looked a lot like dragon fruit, which I know is very unlikely where I live, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed 
that we'll be able to eat uh, this fruit later on in the year. So I found that um, behind hydrangeas that I severely pruned, as you can see. Um, I discovered lots of different types of edible mushrooms. So I've been a long time forager of field mushrooms, having grown up on a farm. That's what farm kids tend to do. Um, but I've discovered this year a whole bunch of other edible mushrooms around here. So this picture includes turkey tails and oyster mushrooms as well. The orange ones down at the bottom there are actually not edible. That was something that I was um, learning to ID at the time. So another food source for me. And then that progressed into me learning how to clone those mushrooms just with simple equipment I already had. So I've just cloned growing mycelium on cardboard in a container and so um, I'm just in the process of building that all up before I then start trying to produce fruit which is the mushroom. Another useful plant I discovered was hawthorns which are actually a weed but the hawthorns and leaves are edible and make a really great tea dried them out and um, have a big stash of tea now, which is quite delicious. And the wood's also meant to be good for carving. Probably that might be something I look at doing down the track. I realised I was surrounded by heaps of other edible weeds as well, which I'm still learning about. But Catsy, the first one on the left, and Dandelion um, were so prolific in April around here. I focused on learning more about those and harvested their roots like dandelion coffee, which actually tastes really great. So now I have a coffee shoot as well without the caffeine. I found roses hidden in random parts of the garden, and some of those had rose hips. So I don't know a lot about roses. Um, I've always been more of a native plant gardener, so a lot of these plants are very um, foreign to me. So, uh, made sure they were in fact rose hips and what I should do with them. So I ended up making a tea out of those as well. I really like my teas. But other things that I could have done if I had more was probably make some syrups or jellies. And just again, projects for the future years. Now my newfound knowledge of different edible mushrooms, pine mushroom and slippery, but because I was now turning tuning into my surroundings, I noticed for the first time in the 18 months that we'd been here that there were pine trees 10 metres from the top of our driveway on the road. So I'd never noticed them before because I was always going past in the car, trying to get from A to B and thinking about what was for dinner and so on. But I'd never walked down the main road until social distancing measures were in place because I always thought it was too dangerous. So, um, yeah, I see. So I didn't find any mushrooms when I went up there looking, but I suddenly realised I had an amazing resource available for mulching my raspberries. Raspberries like this uh, acidic advice provided by the pine needles, so I grabbed the wheelbarrow and started digging it to my raspberry patch. And prior to this, I'd been thinking about what I needed to buy to do this job. So I saved myself um, some time and some resources. On another occasion, my kids came back from a walk and said they'd found a chestnut tree by our landlord's shed. Now I thought, wonderful, another source of food to forage, and I went to collect some. But I noticed they were a bit different to my mother-in-law chestnuts, and I vaguely knew of poisonous horse chestnuts. So I did some research, which confirmed the kids had found chestnuts, also known as conkers. Now, around the same time, I'd noticed another chestnut lookalike in the garden, and I eventually established that this was a buckeye tree. So all my research about these plants led me to discover that they are actually in the same plant family as the laundry agent soap nuts. And they also contain saponins, which is the soap-like chemical in soap nuts. So I've been experimenting with using horse chestnuts and buckeye to create washing liquid, and it works quite well. So if you have soap nuts, you can imagine how exciting it is to be self-sufficient in them. Now, 
I didn't just find plants in the garden that were pretty interesting. I found lots of wire fencing and old tree guards under dense trees. So obviously these had come from the orchard while it was getting established and being a farm, you know, wire gets replaced and, and obviously this has sort of been a collection point for it. So I saw it as a great resource and I've started repurposing a lot um, as garden trellis and we also reused some of it to fix up the fence in the orchard which will allow us to keep a sheep or two in there when we finish getting that completely set up. I also found an old post which I repurposed into a garden sculpture. This might not be everyone's cup of tea of art, but I quite like it. Um, and I found some rusty metal sheeting, which I want to attempt to make into something um, arty as well. Who you knows what I'll come up with. One of the most surprising finds for me was finding a little tank full of soft drink bottles from the 70s, as well as a sauce bottle from the 50s, hidden behind a thicket of holly. I've been able to clean all the bottles for reuse. And after winching the tank um, out from behind this thicket of holly, and I cut a lot of the holly down, we've decided to use the, use the tank as a fire pit in the backyard. So you can see there's a bit of a gap down the bottom. So unfortunately, the tank was so old that when we winched it out, the winch actually went straight through it. Um, but we still think we can make it work. Now, whilst on the topic of bottles, I also found some Fowler's Vicola one-point juice bottles, which were made between 1915 and 1960, which were tucked out of view in a corner of a cupboard in the house when I was looking for potential apple storage areas. So I've also restored the seals on these and um, we'll reuse those as well. Now, through my just walks around the garden, I found enough scattered, mostly buried garden rocks to collect and put them together to, move, to make new garden borders, which I'm really happy with. Also, similarly with bricks, there's a lot of old bricks from the old house lying around, so I just keep collecting those and using them as I can. And there was plenty of fallen timber from the big eucalypts and the orchard around the place. So I, I cut that up and have repurposed that into garden borders as well, which I also think is really effective and I like it. So I've saved heaps of money in making my gardens look nice this way as well as reducing consumption of resources and, and waste. Now, finally, there was an old bathtub in the paddock just next to the backyard, so I used that to build a worm farm. And I also used some of the bricks that were lying around, some wood that I collected, and the wire found on the property. And I finished it all off with a few extra items I salvaged from my community, such as the fence palings. Now, to finish off, I'll share some examples of the things I discovered in my local community that I've been able to use because our local community makes up part of our place and it might be more important for some people whose place doesn't include as much land as mine. So make sure you look around your community. Through my local community, I've been able to obtain free fence palings, which are used for the worm farm and some other little DIY projects. They were just on the side of the road. Someone had advertised in market. Place. We also managed to find a free timber box which we turned into a wicking bed. So that box was actually going to be burnt and my husband rescued it and brought it home. Um, I also discovered a lady was redoing a garden and was giving away all of her plants, but she needed a bit of help digging them up. So I helped her dig them up and got to take the plants home. So I think I got at least 100 free plants. Um, we also got a free garden shed frame with a roof, which we're turning, in, turning into a cubby house. Um, that was a really great find because my daughter, she was making huts everywhere out of prunings and things, and that was great. Um, but she did really want a cubby house as well. And so when we saw that, uh, we just thought that's perfect. And interestingly, the people we got the cubby house frame from, they got it from a clearance sale as well for only $2.
Um, and the other one here on the right, we got lots of free glass windows and glass panes through Marketplace, just finding those in our neighbourhood and we're using those to create a glass hothouse. So that's still in construction and hopefully I'll be sharing pictures of that soon and some details. Now I know many people will be thinking, this is impossible for me where I live. I don't have access to this sort of stuff or the land. But my point is, how do you know that? I didn't know that any of this stuff was at our place or available to me until I had the time and motivation to explore, learn some more and just have a go. So have you really taken the time to get to know your place and the ways it can help you maximise resources and minimise waste? Thank you. I hope you found that interesting. Um, if you want to have a chat to me about any of it or anything else on my blog, you can find me at these places. Thanks, and I hope you enjoy uh, the festival.